what you think. And so, I had a lot of thoughts about what to speak about on asterisk tag. And I believe, well, most people here know what I'm doing in asterisk and other stuff. So I'll try to give you a, a very personal view of my world and my opinions. So there's going to be a lot of personal opinions in this talk. I call it annual report. And I started to think about what happened this last year. Well, personally, I got a lot of problems with my back last fall, so I couldn't work with a computer for a long time. I wouldn't. We're using the mic for, for I know. I have to walk because of my back. <laughs> so, you have a wireless phone. Anyway, I had to walk around and think quite a lot. And I had to read and listen. And I got thinking about Vonko de Seine. Have you heard about Vonko, Vonko de Seine? Are you hackers or not? Haven't you read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Vonko de Seine moved to the beach outside of California and built an inside-out house that called the asylum for the rest of the world. Well, with the problems with my back and a customer declaring bankruptcy in December, I got depressed. But it wasn't only that, because people kept telling me things when I had time to speak with them instead of hacking asterisk. Um, this was the last depressing message I found on mailing list and a blog from Trixbox and Finality. Well, I tried to get my living out of working with open source, open source development and stuff, and they said that this is a broken business model that just won't work. At the same time, I visited Huntsville a while ago, and Digium keep growing, and from one developer basically, Mark, they're now 15, 16 on your team, Kevin? 15, yeah. They keep investing, they keep paying for open source. Another depressing thing, Sorry, Daniel. A lot of people in the SIP world and the telephony world say, tell me that SIP proxies just won't happen. The back-to-back -back UA is the only way forward. I don't agree with them, but well, I'm working with a back-to-back -back UA, so okay. Enum won't happen. Video won't happen. Dialing by SIP URI won't happen. And worse, SIP is just telephony, nothing else. I'm totally wrong. I'm in the wrong business with the wrong visions, losing money. Bull. What am I doing here? But wait, SIP is just telephony. What's telephony then? Well, this is where telephony is going. A race for low cost minutes, competing with. 15 cents to Alemania, and Inglaterra, 15 cents, whatever. This is where PSTN telephone is going. If we're going to build something new, we're going to cross the chasm, we're going to do something different than this. But most of my customers are actually in this business doing this, competing themselves to death, declaring bankruptcy. They're paying in advance now. Uh, I mean, I've been around in the networking business for a long time. When I started back in 89, I was talking about something called TCPIP. Have you heard of that? And the internet? Nah, it's going to be killed by IPX, DECnet, MSN, whatever. It's not going to be anything. An internet mail, ah, X400 is the standard, it's the way to go. I heard all of this before. So, <laughs> I'm actually happy that people keep telling me that SIP won't happen, dialing by URI won't happen, Enum won't happen, because it's exactly the same people from the same background that told me that TCP IP will never, ever happen, and internet is not going to be anything at all. <laughs> Let's move on. The war continues. And which war is it? Well, it's the same old war between datacom and telecom, bellheads, netheads. Different technology, different mindset. And it's kind of interesting because if you look at it, well, you have the old telecom world, you have the old datacom world and the old broadcast TVs, and they're all moving towards the same. 
Everything will be IP. And every IP network will be connected to the internet. And what does this really mean for all of us? Well, we can get a lot of money by solving NAT problems for the guys who want to do PSTN, but what this really means is a change of business models. Because old business models doesn't really work on the internet. You have to accept a freedom of choice for the user. And this is really important. Telco, well, in the telecom world, we discussed this yesterday, Randy, the provider still has the same business model as he had in the Minitel area in France, in the Videotex area, and Prestel area. He wants to be in control of selling services. And the same business model came back once again with a third generation mobile system. We were going to use portals and buy services from the carrier, datacom services. The carrier was in focus, the carrier was the portal, the carrier was the person who sold all these cool, sexy features to you. What happened? Well, last summer everyone in Sweden and Norway, where I work, got small USB dongles. Connected that to the laptop using 3G. It's really amazing. Out of my summer cottage where I couldn't actually subscribe to a normal phone service because we were f too far away from the phone station, I could actually sit on the mountain and surf with megabit speed. But I didn't connect to any bloody portal. I didn't buy music from the service provider. I didn't, I didn't even touch any of the web services of the service provider. I connected to the internet, placed calls with my asterisk server. So walled gardens, we've seen them on telco side for years, we've seen them on cable TVs, networks, and even broadband service provider. This started with walled garden business models. And I keep seeing that with my customers. Yes, we're going to sell PSDN telco services, and people will have to pay us to host IVRs, and we will stop anything else. Yeah, right. So, every attempt from the IP service provider to get profit from content has failed. But they still try. The triple play guys sell IP access, telephony, and TV. You can't choose telephony service provider, you can't choose TV channels, you get a bundle set. And you have a limited internet access. Guess what? People will connect their Apple TV and download the TV channels they want to over the internet. Triple play doesn't work, really. So, why do they continue to attempt the old business models? Well, they're used to that. It's the only way they know. It's very hard to change the mindset, change the way you think. And it's hard for us in Asterisk development to listen to Jay and understand, saying, we can do that in C code in an hour, we'll prove that to you. Two hours. Oh, two hours with assembly. Okay, fine. It's all about the tipping point. About the tipping point. And you need to remember then, old guys like me, we remember some things, not all. Not most of it, I guess. When we started working with TCP IP and TCP IP services, internet access was reaching a decent price level, all the rest disappeared. No one is talking about, should I con connect over frame relay between my offices or should I use X25? You buy an IP service you get an RG45 with IP and you don't care about how they deliver to you, really. It's gone. It disappeared quickly. So the question now is, if we do the SIP thing, the VoIP thing properly, how fast can we remove all those ISDN and kill some Goma sales? Ha 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 and maybe also part of Digium. So, back to the visionary part. I strongly believe in the ideas about SIP being a real-time platform. 
I'm usually starting my SIP training saying that 